This week's video follows on from last week's video, which was our first day of BMS witnessing. You're a mechanical consultant, you're attending sites to do BMS witnessing, what do you do on the very first day? Today's video is day two of BMS witnessing. Now hopefully, the second session has been arranged for two weeks after the first session. So there's been time for things to progress further and the BMS companies had more time. If the second day is scheduled to be two days or three days after the first day when nothing was ready, um, it means that the builder is either um, very desperate or under a lot of pressure to get the BMS signed off um, perhaps they're running late and there's you know, a potential for financial penalties or whatever it is. It's important for you to, to take a breath and have a discussion with the builder and say to them, look, at session number two, we really have to get into control strategy witnessing, going through chillers and boilers and air handling units. Um, and to do that, we need the building to have progressed to a point that everything is in auto. We need to have all the heating and cooling valves in auto all the dampers in, in auto, all the VAVs in auto. Otherwise, we're just gonna be sort of wasting our time. So try and be like, you know, uh, polite, but be firm in that discussion because you do not wanna be sitting at your desk, you know, and you're under pressure to sign off practical completion. And you've got that sort of uneasy feeling in your stomach because you, you're you under pressure to sign off. Um, and this is more relevant in Australia where in our design and construct model, the consultant in the construction phase is employed by the builder. So the person who's rushing and under pressure is your client who pays your invoice. It's a bit bad, it's crazy actually, um, but it is what it is. So you don't wanna avoid that, that difficult discussion with the builder and get pushed into a corner where you gotta sign off and you haven't checked the building properly. So um, in a few days approaching the second session, what you want to do is you want to send off an email and say, um, before I get there, can I have all of the valves and damper actuators in auto? Sounds pretty obvious, but um, you'll often get to site and sit down and you want to start doing something. Oh, hang on a sec, you know, all these valves are over it and I'll just release them quickly. You know, it's, it was all signed off yesterday mechanically and you're gonna sit there and wait and be put into auto. The second part of that same discussion, which is probably more important, is ask them to run around and go and put all the variable speed drives keypads into auto, because they would have been overridden for mechanical air and water balancing. Get them in auto and run around past all the mechanical boards and get all the handoff auto switches into auto. Because it's a big waste of time when you're trying to do a stage down and the pump stays on and uh, the BMS output goes off and the status is still on and there's this realization that, okay, hang on a sec, that pump's probably over and on still from uh, water balancing. Or you're trying to control a set point of something and you're not, it's not working and it's because the VSD has been put into manual and ramped up to you know, design volume or whatever it is. So in the preparation for day two, ask them to get all the, everything in auto, hand off auto switches in auto, keypads, in auto on the variable speed drives. I also ask them to set the time schedule so the morning of the witness, the plant starts up automatically at seven o'clock in the morning. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting down to do witnessing, getting your, your specification out, getting ready, telling jokes, and the whole building's off. And the first thing they do is they're gonna turn all the time schedules on, they're gonna wait for the AHU to start up and the valve to open and they get demand signals for chillers and boilers to come on. It's just it's a complete waste of time. So make sure that everything is set up and started. So by the time you get there at nine o'clock in the morning, because we like to start late consultants, um, when you get there at nine o'clock in the morning, there's some reasonable temperatures on the floor. You know, stuff's running. So get them to do that. What I like to do then is, when I'm sitting down and getting ready, because there's normally like five minutes of laughing and joking, trying to like, you know, set the tone and get like a little bit less stressful. And let me say to the BMS engineer, listen here, um, while we're getting ready, the entire low rise, 10 floors, can you switch all those VAV boxes and force them into VMAX, volume max? Can you do that? And it might be a good idea just to mention before you get there in that preparation email that you're gonna ask for this because 
I had it a few weeks ago with Johnson Controls. It was very well set up and I'd built all these sort of commissioning points that you could just push a button and it would just very quickly set whole floors into VMAX or VMIN or whatever it was. Um, some BMS systems also can do wildcard searches for points and then group a lot of points and override them. It's really easy. But some BMS systems, if they haven't thought through in advance that sort of commissioning plan, um, those commissioning functions, it could almost become impractical. They might say to you, well, actually to do that, I've got to go to every single VAV box individually and override the temperature set point to be 12 degrees Celsius and then wait for the box to change over into full cooling and to drive open. I think an hour to do that or two hours to do that, every single box, 10 floors. So I sort of might prep them on that. But so what will happen is as we're getting ready, set the low rise to VMAX, all the VAVs drive to VMAX. Now, why I'm doing this is when you do that and all the VAVs go towards VMAX, the duct pressure drops and the air hand unit supply fans start to speed up. And sometimes you'll start resetting the supply pressure set point up, if you do that in your country, up towards the design value. While it's happening, the supply fan speeding up, the return fan speeding up, it's all it's automatically changing into full cooling at that mode or without the actual cooling, but volume wise. And then I say to them, can you also set the highest CO2 sensor to a thousand parts per million? So they do that somehow, or they change some set points, and then the AHU starts to swing over into design outside air volume. Not a hundred percent damper open, go watch those videos, but the design volume. So I'm sitting there and that takes about five minutes to start happening. So we're in, we're in this full cooling mode. What I then do is, um, and again, if you've planned this up front, it'll be easy. You tell the mechanical contractor that the first thing I want to check is, I want to check a few calibrations of some of the air handling units outside air volume sensors. So when the whole low rise of 10 floors goes to VMAX, you might have six air handling units doing the low rise, the four perimeter AHUs and the two internals. So in that plant room on the low rise, there'll be six air handling units, supply fan speeding up, return fan speeding up, design outside air volume. So the, the mechanical guy walks up there and goes up there and he gets his pitot tube, he takes a, a grid reading. Um, and on BMS it says 1,000 liters per second, his says you know 980 liters per second, that's good. Why it's important is if you don't plan that and you think about that on the day and they phone and the builder phones up the mechanical commissioning guy, where are you? I'm in basement three doing some fakers. Can you get up to the low rise AHU plant room? That's a problem. But if they've got their, their pitot tubes and, their, and their, their gauges or instruments and ready to go, that check is super quick. Just check one or two AHUs. So we've basically set the AHU into its design mode via an auto without overriding things, except VMAX. Then what I do is, this is what gets interesting. I then say to them, okay, I want you to switch all those VAVs from VMAX to V-minimum, the whole low rise, 10 floors. Tap the keyboard, that happens. Now, in, automatically, we'll start to see the VAVs all backing off, the supply air fans backing off, the return air fans backing off, and when you do something like that, you're actually checking a lot of things at the same time without actually doing individual checks. That swing proves a lot of different types of things. Supply fan pressure control, the return fan air tracking. Now the outside air, air rate shouldn't change because although we've got a reduced like, a cooling demand, we still have the same amount of people because we've still got this, you know, thousand parts per million on the sensor. So we still got one person per 10 meters squared, for example, across the 10 floors. So at that point in time, with the VAVs at V minimum, supply fan at minimum, return fan at minimum, we should still have the design outside air rate in liters per second. Our occupancy hasn't changed. The sun's moved around past the north glass in the southern hemisphere, or the building's shaded, or there's clouds, or it's raining, whatever it is. The, the temperature, the thermal demand is reduced. Occupancy hasn't. Now at that point in time, that mechanical guy takes a reading on the outside air intake, it should still be the same value. It should still be 1,000 years per second. Nine out of 10 times, that test will fail. Why? Because, and I think we touched on this with chill water systems, is that the whole mechanical air system, VOVs, VMAX, AHU supply fan, return fan, the tall exhausts on, whatever else it is, the outside air fans all on, 
it's all balanced to be like that. So it works in full cooling. When you go into minimum cooling, mechanical generally don't actually do a mechanical test in V minimum. They never check that. So nine out of 10 times that will fail. And that's the first issue to write down your defects list. So what usually happens is they're like, oh, okay, the supply fan slowed down, the return fan slowed down, that didn't, that relationship wasn't quite right. And we've dropped from a thousand liters to, you know, 800 liters per second on these AHUs. So then they'll go and they'll have to go back and do some tweaking of the return fan, you know, slow down a bit more, or they'll close the return air damper a bit more so that the AHU pulls more. Getting a bit distracted, that's a, another whole long story. So we've done that test. Um, now, if you really want to go the next step, what you do is you say, listen here, um, that CO2 sensor, a thousand parts per million, release that override and drop it to 600 parts per million. So we select V minimum, supply fan minimum, return fan minimum, and now we're dropping the CO2 into a reduced occupancy mode. So we should see the outside dampers closed off or however that strategy is, and you should see that outside air volume go from the thousand, which had probably failed the previous test, down to something else, 500 liters per second, which I like to call minimum makeup air. It's not design anymore. Um, that test will also nine out of 10 f times fail because nobody, nobody tested that. No one tested this exact arrangement. And that's a real condition. That's a winter's day, V minimum, and low occupancy in the morning or you know afternoons, Friday afternoons. That's gonna happen. So that normally happens. Uh, and you're writing this down. The last test with this particular sequence, if you really want to push the boundaries here, you then say to the BMS company, I want you to activate after hours mode. This is the mode where it's Saturday, one floor out of the 10 low rise is occupied for four hours after hours mode. So they, they activate after hours mode and you know nine of the other floors, the supply and return shut up dampers close off. Shh just the one floor's open. When that happens, the duct pressure goes up, of course. The HU supply fan slows down to its absolute minimum. The return fan slows down to its absolute minimum. What do you think the outside air intake volume is at that point? So pause the video, have a think about that. We're in V minimum on the low rise. Um, we've got low occupancy, we've got 600 parts per minute of CO2 and we're in after hours mode, there's only one floor going. What is the outside air volume? What have you said it was? It's not that. South Africans can be a bit arrogant sometimes. Apologies for that. Um, the outside air volume, a lot of the time is zero liters per second zero liters per second in this after hours mode because the supply fan has slowed down so much that the return fans should probably actually turn off completely, turn off because with such a low supply volume, we need most of that air to be coming through the outside air. We can't have the return coming around. So the return fan should shut off. I only found this out recently because I, I did a project where um, the tenant was going to have, um, there was a, whatever it was, they had these 24 hour floors. So every single night was after hours, not just the occasional Saturday, every single night at five o'clock, occupancy would change, people would go home, but this floor in the low rise, and there was one in the high rise as well, they were 24 hour floors. So every night was after hours. So there's a big focus on understanding the outside air ventilation rates um, and the building positive pressurization around after hours mode because it happened every single night. And that's when I realized this huge issue around, actually, I'm going to stop right here. We are massively digressing here. This is about witnessing, not the actual details of the control strategies. What, what I'm really trying to say here is, um, before you go to witnessing, have a plan about what you're going to witness. Have this plan worked out because if you go there without a plan, what will actually happen is you'll end up going to AHU and saying, oh, please override the supply pressure set point you know, down. Watch the fan slow down. Please override the supply temperature set point down. Cooling valve opens. Um, you know, change the outside air temperature and go into economy cycle. 
That's what we normally check. Those things are probably gonna work, but in the scheme of things of how complicated control systems are nowadays, that's not that important. So I don't, I don't tend to check those basic things um, because um, considering like how late everything's running and the, the pressure we're under, those sort of things, they're not important in the scheme of things. Same applies for chill water systems. I'll just do this quickly. For chill water systems, um, get them to override all the heating valves fully open. So all the AHs have got hot air going in the supply air, all the cooling valves then start to automatically open. So you'll start to see, you know, all the chill water valve, cooling valves open up, the pressure in the pipe will be dropping, the, sec the primary pumps or the secondary pumps, whichever one it is, they'll be speeding up to maintain the pressure. It'll probably cause a chiller stage up because there's, there's warm stuff in the coil there. Warm air, so warm water, warm air in the coil. So your chiller will stage up from chiller one to chiller two, you'll see a stage up. That's the best way to do it. Like it takes time to set that up, but if everyone knows that's how you're gonna do it and, and you've planned for that, it's not that hard to do it. As soon as you sit down at the desk, you say to him, please override all the heating valves fully open on the low rise AHUs and the high rise AHUs, do that. And watch the chiller valves open and the whole thing stage up. It's good to see it ha that happen. Once you've staged up, do a stage down. You know, then I say to them, okay, I want you to release half of those heating valves to auto, half of them to auto. Bang, they all drop off, those cooling valves back off, pressure, pumps, um, and eventually I'll have all the heating valves off and the cooling valves be closing off, closing off, closing off, and we'll stage down to the low chiller. The big point here is, my whole focus here is that I'm focusing on, as we discussed in other videos, I think, earlier in the year, we wanna focus on the minimum flow control through the chiller, that the bypass is opening to maintain the minimum flow to the chiller. How we do that is we've knocked off all the heating valves and the cooling valves. Then I'll say to them, shut off 20% of the cooling valves, override them closed. They'll go and close off to zero, override to zero, like you know, three or four AHUs. Just wait two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Pressure goes up, the flow of the chiller drops, the bypass valve cracks open. Drop off three more chiller cooling valves, bypass valve opens. Drop off two more AHUs, bypass opens. Drop them off, drop them off. When I get down to about half the chiller valves, I've dropped off half the chiller valves to closed, but half left. Then I say to them, with those half, override them all to 50%, bypass valve opens. Those half, override them to 30%, bypass, bypass. In the whole scheme of chiller, sta chiller staging, with ch staging on chiller capacity, refrigerant, all the stuff, pumps, blah, 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 the thing that's not gonna work is the minimum flow through the chiller when you're not on the hot days of the year. If you're on shoulder seasons, we just need a little bit of cooling, or you have chill water systems serving comms rooms or supplementary cooling systems when you're on your, your low load chiller, it's not hot outside. That's the thing that's not gonna work, not the other stuff that's pretty obvious. Right, apologies guys, I got a little bit carried away there, but you, you get the point of what I'm talking about. Be prepared for what you wanna do. Let them know what you're gonna do so they can be prepared and, and do a full swing test, full swing test. Don't check little dumb things because they will probably work and they're not important. So if you've got some ideas from that, please like and subscribe. This was day two, control strategy testing. Next week is day three. Uh, I've checked my notes what that is. Have a good week and I will see you then.